we're going to do one more Carnal map example. And, uh, well, the topic we are going to use strikes fear in the hearts of some, maybe not fear, panic, anger in the hearts of others, annoyance in the hearts of others, and yet some of them, some people experience anticipation. No, we're not talking about politics. We are talking about the alarm clock. And I'm doing a really bad job here of making this. There, how's that? <laughs> Not all that great. Well, um, yes, most people are using phones now and so forth in order to do, uh, to wake them up in the morning. But um, there are still a lot of applications for this particular kind of display. Um, some of you this morning, and, and I have been teaching for a very long time, so I know that some of you perhaps this is what the alarm clock said whenever you woke up this morning, right? Uh, noon. I'm not talking about midnight. I'm talking about noon. I, however, have Labrador Retrievers. And Labrador Retrievers, once you teach them that this is when, or, or and you don't even have to teach them, <laughs> all you have to do is one time get up and feed them at 5 a.m., they're up every day at 5 a.m. So what we're going to do is design, well, we're not going to design the alarm clock. What we're going to do is design the driver that drives that display and specifically just one digit of that display. What we've got, and, and, and we'll, we'll try and draw something up here. What I've got is... The single digit of the display is made up of seven LEDs, and these seven LEDs give it the name seven segment display. So this guy is a seven segment display. All seven LEDs are there all the time, it's just whether or not they're on or off decides which digit we are displaying. Now, typically each one of these segments, each one of these LEDs is given a little lowercase letter to identify it. So I start at the top, A, B, C, and we have D. E, F, and G. All right, now, in order to make it easier, uh, a little slicker, a little, a little simpler in order to, 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 to display a digit there, there is a device called a seven segment, so we're gonna do seven segment display driver. All right, and what it has is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven outputs labeled A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So it has those seven outputs that drive the different LEDs for this seven segment display. So those are all outputs, and think about it. Each output will have its own truth table. Um, so there's, there's gonna be seven sum of products expressions that take as the input which digit we're going to display, and the output is going to be which one of these guys have ones on it in order to turn on those LEDs. What are the inputs to this system? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have four inputs. And these four inputs I'm gonna label with capital A, capital B, capital C, and capital D. Now, the, this is going to be a hexadecimal nibble, right? Four bits, four bits. And those four bits are going to, based on the seven circuits in here, going to be turning on or off each one of the LEDs. For example, let's just do something really easy. How about we have zero, 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 zero there? Well, that's a zero, right? Well, what we wanna do is display a zero on that seven segment display. That means we're gonna turn A on, right? We're gonna turn B on, C on, D on, E on, F on, and G is gonna be off. And we're gonna display that zero. So the output of those seven circuits is going to be one, 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 zero. All right. Give you an idea of how this system is going to work. 
Great, let's go ahead and do the truth table now. Now the truth table I'm going to design, I'm not gonna do all of the segments. I do have, a, I'll show you a table that has all of the segments, but we're only gonna design E. We're just gonna pick E and decide whether it's on or off for the different patterns of ones and zeros that'll be at the inputs. So we have A, B, C, and D. So that's 16 possible patterns of ones and zeros. All right. Now, in this particular in this in this particular um, truth table, what I'm going to do is have two columns that show. Well, first of all, what I'm going to do is have a column showing what the display is going to look like. Um, it, it it just just kind of give you a little hint of of what I'm talking about whenever we're showing what the display is going to. To, to be presenting. And then I'm going to have a column just showing whether the E segment is on or off. All right. So we've already done zero. That is all the outside ones on, right? And then one. Well, the one we're going to have just B and C on. So just those two on. A two is going to have the top one the top right, the bottom left, and then all the horizontal ones on. Three is also gonna have all the horizontal ones on, but B and C are also gonna be on. And then four is going to look like that. Then five, basically a backwards two, right? Six, we're gonna design like that. Seven is gonna have the top segment on and then both right hand segments on, eight is going to have all of them on, right? Nine, nine is going to have all of them on except for segment E. Now, now we get to the letters. Now the letters are a little bit more difficult to do because sometimes a capital letter might look like a digit we already have. Uh, and so we'll have to go with the lowercase letter. Uh, in some cases the uppercase, the lowercase letter looks not quite like a digit we want to display, so um, or it's not going to be quite visible. So we're going to have to decide back and forth whether we want a uppercase or lowercase. For A, it turns out that turning on everything except for D will give us an A. B, if we do a capital B, it'll look a lot like an 8. So we'll do a lowercase b. A lowercase a would have looked just like a little little o. Uh, C, we could go uppercase or lowercase. Let's just go ahead and go uppercase. D, because an uppercase D would look like a zero, we're going to go ahead and do a lowercase D. E, can't do a lowercase, so we're going to have to do an uppercase, which really looks like a backwards three, right? And then F, we also have to do an uppercase. So there we go. There are all of the different patterns that we're going to use in our display from our seven segment display based on the inputs coming into the A, B, C, and D uh, inputs, the, the hexadecimal value. Now, all we have to do for the E column is look to see if this lower left hand segment is on. So it is on for a zero. It is off for a one. It is on for a two. It is off for a three. Four has it off. Five has it off. Six has it on. Seven has it off. Eight has everything on. Nine, the only thing that's off is E. A has it on. B has it on. C has it on. D has it on. E has it on. And F has it on. All right. So. We've got this little truth table. Now remember, this is just for one circuit out of the seven circuits that are in that device. So we have these, uh, these bits right here, which are going into a sum of products expression, which are driving that E segment right there, which are turning on and off that LED. All right. So let's see exactly what the Carnow map looks like. Now remember, the four input Carnow map has four columns and it has four rows. The columns are identified with different values for A and B. So this is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. 
Once again, gray code, we need to use gray code so that neighboring cells are, uh, differ by only one variable, right? And then we're going to have four columns identified with the different patterns of C and D. So once again, with gray code 00011110. And now it's just a matter of taking this truth table and converting it over to this Carnell map so we can figure out what our rectangles are. So this one, so this cell right here is 0000. That top row has a 1 in it. Next cell, 0001, that's the second row, has a 0 in it. Now, the third, the third cell, 0011, that jumps us down to the fourth row, the one that represents 3, and that has a 0 in it. This cell right here, 0010, uh, 0010, that brings us back up to the third row that we had skipped over. We got a 1 in that one. All right. Now, this cell right here, that cell right here is 0100, 0100, that has a 0 in it. This cell right here, 0101, 0101 has a 0 in it. This cell right here, 0111, jumps us down to this eighth row, has a 0 in it. This cell right here, 0110, brings us back up to the row representing 6. The seventh row has a 1 in it. Next cell, this cell right here. Once again, gray code is going to make us do a jump in the truth table, so we're going to go down to row 1100. This is the row representing C, has a 1 in it. This cell right here, 1101, 1101 has a D, has a 1 in it. This cell right here, 1111, brings us all the way to the bottom row, F, which has a 1. This cell right here, 1110, brings us back up to the E row, where there's a 1. See some rectangles showing up, don't we? This cell right here, 1000, so brings us back up to the row with 8, 1000. All of them are on for an 8. 1001, 1001, this row for 9 has a 0 in it. This cell right here, 1011, 1011 has a B, that's a 1 in it. And then this last cell right here, 1010, brings us back up to row A, which has a 1 in it. All right. Now, do we see any rectangles? Well, I think we do have some rectangles here, don't we? Now remember, the deal is, is that we're going to, to pick one of the ones in our Carnell map and see how big a rectangle we can unfold. Remember, we're going to double it each time. And so this cell right here, I can't double it to the right, there's a zero blocking me. I can't double it to the one below it, there's a zero blocking me. But I can double it across, remember we can cross borders, so I can actually pair it with these two. So those two can be paired together. Can I make it any bigger? Well, it turns out I can. Because remember, I can not only cross borders from left to right, but I can also cross borders top to bottom. These two ones right here have matching ones on the bottom row right here. Oh, that's an ugly rectangle. Yes, it turns out that this right here is a valid rectangle. That's a perfectly valid rectangle. All right. And that's as big a rectangle as we can put around that guy right there. Right. So do we have any other rectangles? By the way, I doubled it twice, right? So I doubled it once and I doubled it twice. That means that two variables are going to drop out. Two of my inputs are going to drop out and the resulting product is only going to have two inputs and, that, and, and, and that'll simplify our expression, right? All right, some of you may see that I've got a nice rectangle right here and a nice rectangle right here, right? I still have one one that is not covered by a rectangle. And what we need to do is that one can't pair with the one to its left, but it can be doubled up and then it can be doubled again going to the right. So 
All right, so we have three, four rectangles there, right? So our sum of products expression, all of the rectangles are of size four, doubled twice. So that means two variables are going to drop out of, two of the input variables are going to drop out of every product. And there's going to be four products because we have four rectangles. All right, let's start out with this guy right here, A, B, C, D. So this top right hand, the top left hand cell is 0, 0, 0, 0. Top right hand cell is 0, 0, 1, 0. Bottom left hand cell is 1, 0, 0, 0. And then the bottom, bottom right hand cell is 1, 0, 1, 0. What's going to drop out? Well, what drops out is A and B and excuse me and C because remember what we're looking for is the variables that will take on every possible value while other variables stay consistent and or stay constant and what we're left with is B ended with D B is a zero so it gets inverted D is a zero so it gets inverted all right all right now this method can be used for all of the rectangles but two of those rectangles actually are pretty simple to take a look at and say, oh, I see which variables change. For example, this horizontal one right here, C and D, all possible values of C and D are covered in this rectangle. The rectangle stays limited to just when A is a one and B is a one. So this rectangle right here is just A ended with B, neither of which get inverted because what you want is an output of a one if A is a one and B is a one. Doesn't matter what C and D is. So that's the product for that rectangle. And in fact, a similar thing can be done for this rectangle right here. That rectangle right there stays in that one column it goes all across every single possible combination of ones and zeros for A and B, but it stays in C is one, D is zero. So this will become C, D, bar. All right. Now we've got one last rectangle. This one's not quite as obvious as the two in the row, the, the one in the row and the one in the column. So we'll go ahead and, and do it uh, by, uh, by enumerating all the possible combinations of ones and zeros. This cell right here is A is one, B is one, C is one, D is one. So all of them are ones. This cell right here is one, 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 zero. So we see immediately that D is going to drop out. This cell right here is one, zero, one, one. Right? And so we see that B is going to drop out, which means that the last cell has got to be 1010, right? And it is. So this cell right here, 1010. And we see that B drops out because it changes, and D drops out because it changes. And we're left with just A and C. Do either of them need to be inverted? No. Turns out neither of them needs to be inverted because what we want is an output of a 1, right? When A is a 1, and when C is a one. So there's our product right there. All right. So we actually have all four of our, uh, all four of our products. And so we've got our expression and I'm going to put the expression down. Uh, let's put it down here. So we'll say that the segment E is equal to the sum of products expression A ended with B. So we take that guy right there, ORed with B bar ended with D bar that guy right there, ORed with C bar, excuse me, ORed with C ended with D bar, this guy right up here, and then ORed with A ended with C. And there's our expression. All right, we only need to do it six more times, right? And it turns out, yes, it's pretty straightforward. Now, if you're following this class, either you're being forced to, or you have an interest in digital electronics, right? And so a clock radio that displays digits in hexadecimal sounds like a cool thing, right? Sounds like something I'd be interested in. What time is it? Oh, it's uh, 1EA. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Most people really don't care about these guys right here. What do they want? Well, they want a clock radio that only displays digits. B, C, D. And so what we could do is have a seven segment 
a BCD seven segment display driver, which doesn't doesn't acknowledge or acknowledges the wrong word, but it doesn't do anything whenever it's given a value that is not a legal BCD value. And so these guys, remember the don't care? We'll put don't cares here. All right. Now, what did don't cares do for us? Remember, don't cares were wild cards. And the wild cards said, you know, what we're going to do is make it so that the designer using the car now map can put an X, uh, can put a one or a zero in these spots with these wild cards. So, why don't we redo this using the wild cards? All right, so I have left this one down really for comparison purposes so we can see how much did we really simplify this by setting up these wild cards. So let's do another car now map. And remember, we'll just do our four row with four column car now map with A and B identifying the rows and C and D identifying the columns in gray code, all right? So we'll do this a little quicker this time, but uh, so we have the one, zero, zero, one, and then we jump down to the next uh, next four. So we have zero, 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 one, right? And then we jump down to the bottom row where we have the ones starting out with all with two ones. So A and B, so we have A and B equal to one, all four of those guys are X's, right? And then the bottom row, that comes these four rows of the truth table. We start out one, zero, and then X and X, all right? See any rectangles? Things look a lot different this time, don't they? We still have this evil rectangle, which is the corners, right? And we can make that guy because we want to have that one included. We want to have that one included. We want to have that one included. So in order to make that rectangle as large as we possibly can, we're going to set that wild card so that it's equal to a one. All right. And that didn't come out very well. We're going to make that guy a one. Now, what is that cell? That's actually one, zero, one, zero. So if we come up here to A, that's going to actually make that a one. So the actual circuit is going to put ones and zeros for those, but since they're wild cards, we don't care about them. Some of those are going to be zeros. All right. In the original, I don't know if you remember the original truth table, but all of them were ones. Now, any other rectangles? Well, it turns out, yeah, there's one other rectangle. We've got to grab this one right here. So we need to make a rectangle like that, which is also asking this X to be a one. Now that X is the one, 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 zero. So this guy right here, that is going to be set to a one. But all the rest of the X's, if I wanted to include one of those X's in a rectangle, I'd have to add another rectangle that would not be necessary to create the ones for those set, for these rows. So the rest of these guys, I'm just going to say, you know, since we don't care, those are going to be zeros. We're going to leave those guys zeros in the Carnal map. And if you go, if you remember from the original design, this rectangle was B bar, D bar. And this rectangle, that one was C, D bar. And so the term for E for the BCD seven segment display is just B bar, D bar, or with C, D bar. Did we make it simpler? Yeah. Did we make it cheaper? Yeah. Did we make it so it, it, it uses less energy? Yeah. Did we make it a little faster? Well, it didn't get any faster because we still have to go through a two input AND gate before going to an OR gate. But it's still a whole lot cheaper and smaller, runs cooler, and uh, hey, we can pack more of them into a single chip. So there you have it. On another example of taking a real world application, coming up with a truth table using a Carnell map to come up with the most simplified sum of products expression we can get.